Does your washing machine sound like this? If so, you can fix this yourself. My washing machine is an LG washer and it started grinding and now it's starting to leak water. The part that's going out is a hub clutch assembly. I wish I could say it was a cheap part, however it's cheaper than buying a new washing machine. I paid $257 for the part plus shipping and I was able to fix this myself. I don't have a lot of room in the house so I pulled the machine out into the garage. First thing you need to do is remove this cap to reveal the bolt for the plate. I'm using a screwdriver and pushing down on the clip. You need to be careful because the clip is fragile and it will break. All it takes is a little bit of pressure from the screwdriver. I didn't edit this video as much as I normally would. I wanted you to see how much of a struggle some of it was so you know what to expect. Okay. Now that the bolt is exposed, I'll use a 10 millimeter socket on an impact gun to remove the bolt. Now you can remove the plate and it'll expose the drum screws. See it? I can also now remove the washer. Now I'm going to open the lid of the washing machine so I can pull the drum out. You can use a putty knife or a 5-in-1 tool. Go. Then go about 6 inches from the corner of the washing machine and push on this tab. At the same time you push on the tab, lift the lid. You have for now. a tab on both sides of the washing machine. Okay. After I open the lid, I'm going to use some bungee cords to hold the lid from flipping over. Then I'm going to use a Phillip bit and remove the Phillip screws on this plastic ring that holds the drum in place. Okay, all of those are out. So this ring is supposed to come off. You did spray some, huh? I can smell it. Because I don't have a 38 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove the drum from the drive plate. That's why I have more room to use a pipe wrench. The bolts were pretty corroded and had a lot of scale on it from the well water, so I had to use a small pry bar to pry it loose. After loosening up, I was able to pull the drum out. These are also the steps you would take to cleave the drum. If you open the lid on your washing machine and it oh, smells moldy, this is where the smell is coming from. That's what the stink is. All the pipe wrenches I had would not fit in the tub. So I took an inch and a half wrench and cut it so it would fit down inside the tub. Now my son's going to hold the wrench on the nut and I'm going to hit it with a mallet to break the nut loose. Now I'm going to lay the washing machine on its back so I can start working on the clutch assembly. Now I'm going to take a 24 millimeter socket on an impact gun and remove the bottom bolt. I'll also remove the washer and put that on the side. Now I can pull off the rotor assembly. Now depending how long your washing machine was grinding this could be a little bit difficult to take off. The rotor assembly has magnets on it and I think mine may have gouged up the magnets a little bit. Magnets holding it on. Damn. It's been grinding on. That's the noise you heard it grinding. So the grinding on. you hear is the stator rubbing on the rotor because the bearings are uh, wearing out. Now I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolts holding the stator to the clutch assembly. Now you can set the stator down and use a small screwdriver to undo the clips on the plugs and remove all the plugs from the stator. All the plugs are a different size, so you don't have to remember where they go. 
Oh, it's got a clip on the side, yeah. Come on. I wonder if I was supposed to do that before. Oh, oh, here we go. Come on. Need a little screwdriver? Here you can see how bad the bearings yeah. are. Is that supposed to move like that? No. Uh, that's a solid bearing supposed to be in there and that's gone. Now I'll use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the support bracket. Now I'll remove the wiring guard which is also held in place with a 10 millimeter screw. This piece holds the wires away from the rotor and the stator so they don't get ground up. Now I'll change over to a Phillips bit and remove the ground wire. Okay, all my bolts are in there. Now here I removed all the motor screws from the tub assembly. And I probably could have done the actuator arm motor first. Sure now I'll remove the actuator motor from the tub and then unhook it from the arm. You just gotta tilt it and turn it a little to unhook it. I've never done this before. I was a little nervous about prying on the tub against the clutch. And the reason why it wouldn't come off from prying is because I didn't get the plate from the barrel off yet. So I had to flip it back over and then I'm going to pound the shaft out from the plate. Here you can see the plate is still attached to the clutch assembly. I'm trying not to hit it real hard and just trying to loosen it up a little bit. I had to put the camera down so I can get down in there and give it a good whack. I got it to go down some, uh, but I'm going to have to find a pipe to get down in there and hit the center of it. Trying to hit it from there with a mallet, I just can't get a good swing on it. So I had a solid piece of aluminum rod laying around, and I was able to use that to pop it through. Before I went any further, I went to check the new housing to make sure I wasn't missing anything. And it turns out it was just the rubber seal was really stuck to the tub. There, it fell out. This comes out. That's definitely going to need to be cleaned. Before I flip it over to put the new clutch assembly in, I'm going to clean the tub. I used some mold and mildew cleaner along with a scotch pad to remove the scum from the tub. So I can see better and have more light, I took the back off the uh, washing machine and flipped it on its front this time to put everything back together. Before I put the clutch housing back into the tub, the direction said to use soap on the rubber seal before installing. I'm going to be honest with you, it was a little difficult to get that seal to pop into the hole. You'll know you have it in the right place when the pins on the tub, there's little white pins, that'll fit into the holes for the pins on the clutch yes. assembly. You take it back out so you can see. So, there's a tab that sticks out here. This goes in. for it. I should have left uh, in there, but I wanted you to see it. Okay, those two 
almost there. There we go. It went into the tab. Now, I'm gonna try and put one of these screws in here. To just kind of hold it there for a minute. Now I'll reinstall the wire harness guard. See it right there. Then I'll reinstall the actuator motor. First I'll hook the actuator arm to the motor and you'll see how it fits in there. You'll see I have to turn the motor a little bit to get it to clip through. tip right there little pin that, that goes into after you get it into the spot there and then put the screws back in I forgot to put this brace on it also has a hole for a tab to fit through so you know where it goes Okay, so I put these two screws in before I was supposed to. I forgot to put this piece in and I had to take the screw and the screw back out. There's a pin and a pin here that go into this pin and this pin. there and there and now I can put this back on so I put a few too many screws in forgot about the plate I realized I had a few too many screws left over so there's a few I missed that I have to put in now I can put the stator back on Each plug is different, so you won't have to worry about getting the wiring wrong. So this plug can only go one way, and you'll see the little groove, and there's a little groove on this plug, and they will snap in. And be careful, it's heavy. Don't forget to attach the ground wire before you install the stator. I did and had to take it all back apart. in here just to hold this in place for me. It is rather heavy. I'm not sure how important it is, but I tighten it up in a star pattern like you would a wheel on your car. This shouldn't be too bad. It's magnetic, so it's going to want to catch. Whoa. It went right on there. Make sure that wire stays up in there and doesn't grind. One of the main things you have to do here is make sure the wires aren't rubbing on the rotor. Mine were rubbing, so I had to take the rotor back off. Oh yeah. 
the magnets are strong with this one. I want to see if there's another way to put that down in there. Yes. Okay, so. There is a, you need to make sure this wire is in this little holder here because it will rub on this piece if you don't. So make sure it's behind and push back. And this one goes here. Ooh, it's got Time to stand it up. There we go. And there. Before I put any of this stuff back together, I'm going to clean up the parts, clean the drum, and uh, then we'll come back to putting it back together. Now here's where I screwed up and made things very difficult for me. I should have attached this drive plate to the bottom of the drum before I install it onto the shaft. Once I put the nut on and tightened it, it press fit it back onto the gear and I, had, I couldn't get it back off. I could have got it back off if I had a gear puller or a wheel puller, but I didn't have one and I didn't want to go rent one, so I just kind of suffered from this point on. And here's where I realized that I should have attached it to the drum first. The screws or the bolts after I cleaned the crud off, some of them were falling out. Trying to figure out how I was going to get that bolt to stay in, I forgot to turn the camera on. And what I did was I had some wax I softened up, put it onto the bolt and squeezed it up into the, the hole and that held it in place. I just had to be careful on how I put the drum back in. And now I'm ready to reinstall the drum. When installing the drum, there are tabs on the drive plate that line up with holes on the drum. This is to ensure you get the drum in the right position. Buttons need to go into that, line up with that hole when you put this back in. Now I'll install the washers and the nuts and tighten the drum to the drive plate. Now I'm ready to install the agitator. I'll first put the washer on and then the plate. There are teeth in the plate that line up with the spline on the shaft. Then I will reinstall the nut that holds the plate on. Next, I'll reinstall the drum hold down ring. There we go. I'll reattach the ring with the screws. Now, I'll close the lid and reinstall the center cap on the agitator plate. And that also has tabs that fit into holes so you know you put in the right place. 
Then I'll give it one last wipe down and I'll put it back in the house and hook up the water lines and see how it works. Now because I let this go so long, uh, it did a little damage to the stator and the rotor. So there was a little grinding noise, but after running it for about 10-15 minutes, uh, the noise went away and it operates like a brand new machine. Here's the before. And here's after.